So the que first question is, oh, so profound. We have knowledge of the name of the Lord. Oh, oh thank you. A mantra yoga is so accessible. Yes, it's accessible to everyone. Everyone is competent for mantra yoga. There is no extra discipline required to use as a kind of a tool for mantra yoga. This is Swamiji, when we can say we have seen God or God vision, what are the symptoms? Is avatar like Ram Krishna or Sri Ram Krishna still alive? Oh my God. Well, God vision, uh, though it is not related to the topic, uh, things you are, looks like you have entered. Inter you cannot see God with these eyes, physical eyes. You cannot see God with this mind, this particular mind. This mind has to have become completely transformed into what Sri Ramakrishna says as the body of divinity. You know, there was one disciple who asked Holy Mother, I want to see God with these eyes. He said, no, you can't see God with these eyes. That's not wish God vision. Okay. But she's, she makes an exception. Only Swami Vivekananda has seen God with these eyes. But those are, you know, different souls, great souls. So you have developed something called a divine body. Even in the Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna tells Arjuna, I am giving you divine eyes now. See this divine forms of mine. Okay. How do you de develop this divine body? It is a subtle body which is transformed completely through spiritual disciplines. It has become purified, all worldly dross has been removed off and it shines in its own glory. So this is the divine vision. Okay. All these forms of all gods and goddesses are not imaginary. The sages and saints have seen these forms and they have then brought it down to us. This form looks like this and has given us these conceptions. So when we meditate on this form, say of Ram Krishna, now that we have a picture of him also, that the real form of Ram Krishna will be seen only much later through a divine, you can say, grace. The vision will be seen inside, not outside. Remember this. It will be seen inside. Whether these gods and goddesses exist, yes, they can be seen. And, but that's not the end and aim of a religious or spiritual life. The end and aim of spiritual life is much different. It goes much higher. There are higher and higher and higher, you can say, conceptions. When the object and the subject become one, there are no visions then. Okay. So this is, so what people talk about visions and all, I'm not sure, but most of this either some form of hallucination, some form of drug induced kind of visions or something like that, images, sometimes due to sensory deprivation, sometimes due to a kind of upheaval in the mind of some trauma. People see various things, imaginary things and speak about visions. So we don't give much credence, or we don't give much value to visions. If what you see has transformed you, your character, that is important. The change in your character, the change in your personality is what counts. Not 20 times I've seen uh, somebody moving up and down, some angels flying about here. And we are not interested in that. That is not religion at all. So there is a kind of a definite change in one's character. So, uh, okay, so we have 
uh, you had said we should follow the guru's instruction exactly what do you what to do if the guru has left the body and now i am not sure if i am exactly following the instruction of my guru the well the guru has instructed you when he met you when he initiated you well follow those instructions that is the broad road map that the guru has given it to you and as he does not want a disciple who constantly leans on him or her what kind of guru is that who makes the disciple dependent on no that's not a guru the guru will make you stand on your own feet so as you repeat you follow those broad instructions that the guru has given you will fill in the details at a later stage your mind itself becomes a guru okay so you don't have to worry the guru has left the body the, your guru is god himself the guru is not the physical the person that is just a channel the real guru is god shri ramakrishna says sachidananda alone is a guru and if you remember that then you are saved otherwise you will find in the whole marketplace there is a scramble for the guruhood who is the best guru and the disciple will say i am the, i am the disciple of this the best the best guru so it so become so commercialized so we remove all the kind of the discord by make by saying that god alone is the guru so swami ji i read that guru lives in mantra is it true god lives in the mantra as you you go through this whole talk and you will understand mantra aham i am the mantra the guru infuses that mantra with his own powers which the guru has received from his guru and that guru has received from his guru it's a long kind of it's kind of apostolic kind of succession as they say the transmission the transfer of power the laying down of the hands was one of those kind of symbolic acts of transferring the mantra along with the power so the mantras can be got on the youtube in books even in newspaper you get mantras written down but they are not effective because it has to be coming from a person who has infused that mantra with the power so the mantra the guru as god lives in the mantra so remember that so this guru is supposed to be venerated if you repeat the the name of god given to you by your human guru and that itself is an act of veneration thank you thank okay so we have uh, swami ji brahman alone is reality why do you want to go to brahman do you know what brahman is okay and it's in every creature then why people suffer with miseries why is vast creation and covering as himself in body who are you do you know what brahman is this whole universe remember this listen carefully this whole universe which is about 14.8 billion years is nothing but a drop in the ocean of brahman get this right okay your silly life and silly pains and silly miseries are inconsequential what do you talk about this pain and misery of your individual life who are you by the way there are so many creatures so get this idea it's a drop this whole universe is a drop i'm repeating it this is a drop in the ocean of brahman in the reality brahman is not something that you just the word you just throw about we get distressed when you hear such things you know so this whole universe is a huge 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 network of that reality which is seen through time and space and causation 
so that part of the reality which is projected to time space and causation is this manifested universe not this world not your life not no everything there is interconnected and in this vast ocean of this universe and we're talking about a physical universe now in that vast universe everything is interconnected the materials that make up my body and your body have been cooked in stars in supernovas do you know that well so you're connected to the universe and then there's a higher order of reality called the universal mind you don't even know that so there's a that higher aspect and then there's a higher aspect of that same reality called the causal universe so what are you talking about pain and misery and suffering at the same time talk of brahman these things don't gel together when you can understand that the, the law of causation each is balanced so perfectly with everything else you can never know the dynamics of these things let's put it like this swami vivekananda once said well this is the devil's world i could have created a better world you know he is quoting john stuart mill yeah and shri ram krishna says he got how much of the world do you know to say this thing okay so this sin and misery and suffering and pain your vedanta says is due to agnana ignorance the more you have ignorance the more you suffer the more you have knowledge the more you come out of this suffering and misery and pain remember this and try to develop this knowledge instead of thinking about misery and pain and in a way you're blaming that reality for creating this mess there's no mess here actually if you want to see a mess you can see a mess of course <laughs> but the reality is far 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 greater than you can even conceive there the mind stops the mind dies so can you exist beyond the mind vedanta says yes you exist even beyond the mind so what's that beyond the mind yeah try to find it out okay so i uh, gave a long uh, you can answer for govinda kansara okay read the vedanta very carefully systematically don't cherry pick and say i i this is what vedanta says so swami ji if one practices mantra japa can he also do vedantic meditation of course of course vedantic meditation the very very few people you see amongst the greatest of disciples of shri ram krishna one of the greatest it was only swami vivekananda who was competent for vedant practice vedant meditation etc everyone else had to slowly evolve to that state so vedantic meditation starts with the basics that from duality to qualified non duality to non duality so shri ram krishna gives the example of learning archery when you're shooting arrows you take a target which is large and as you keep on practicing then you can reduce the target to a bull's eye so vedantic meditation starts with duality do that it will help you okay i get mantra from my guru then we write it down in a book my guru passes away so amiji please give you write it in a book you are supposed to repeat it <laughs> it has to become part of your your mind the mantra becomes part of your mind the mantra becomes part of your breath the mantra becomes part of your body why write it in the book 
So you keep on repeating. The Guru passes away. What does it matter? You have the living mantra now. Well, uh, and uh, okay. If I repeat Khandana Bhava Bhandana daily with visualization of the prayer, will it have the effect of mantra on me? Of course. Of course. You keep on doing it, there's no prayer. But generally, you use a shorter mantra for better concentration. Of course, we have the Gayatri mantra, which is quite long. There are long mantras. There is no. So you can use the breaker of the world's chain. We adore the Khandana Baba Bandhan. That is written by Swami Vivekananda and his words are the mantras. There is no doubt about that. Okay. So you can. Swamiji, what is reincarnation? I called. Do reincarnation and rebirth the same? Why don't you check the dictionary for these things? You'll find the, those meanings there. The English words. Can... Do we do really reincarnate or do you just disappear in Brahman energy? Oh my God. <laughs> it's not so easy to disappear in Brahman energy. The Brahman is not energy. Is that this idea of energy, energy has kind of is kind of a new AG, you know, sounds new AG, new ageism has nothing. Brahman has nothing to do with energy and all that kind of things. Okay. Now, uh, just a kind of a caution, like a, when you ask questions, this should be related to the subject that has been kind of discussed here. Since you have asked rebirth and reincarnation, yes, they are the same. Reincarnate is the same as rebirth. Okay. Do we really reincarnate? Yeah, you really reincarnate. And do we disappear? Oh yeah, you can. You you come from nothing and then you enter into nothing. Okay, is is that what you want to mean to say? Or do we disappear? No. You, you have a long, 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 extremely long line of past existences rolling down even today. So get yourself into a kind of a attitude that you better need to cut through these bonds of samsara, the bonds of rebirth. And how do you do that? By worshipping God. That is the best way. Just simply disappearing Brahman will not do. You got to worship God. Worship God with your life, with your mind, with your sense of I, the sense of ego. And then you will come away from the chain of births and deaths. Whether it is real, yes it is real. There are proofs, plenty of proofs. Why don't you come over here, we will give you a lot of proofs. Okay. Uh, Swamiji, I don't have Guru, but chant the mant Maha Mantra. Vidik. Okay, yeah, good enough. Keep on chanting and as you keep on chanting, you will find you are attracting your guru to you. Never seek your guru. Never. All this, you know, the monk who sold his Ferrari, he goes out and goes in search of a guru and all, all that kind of, that's okay in a kind of, you know, for movies and books and all. In reality, nobody's, the, the disciple never seeks for the guru. The guru seeks the disciple. It's always like that. This is a law in spiritual life. Okay. Stay your ground, prepare yourself, that is prepare the, the soil and the seed will come by itself. The Guru will seek you out. Swamiji, how can I pray for devotion? Pray for devotion, how? Uh, well, uh, I don't have a Guru but I sit quietly and ask for Sadhguru's grace to shower me. Yes. How do you pray? You pray like you're talking to someone whom you love. You don't have to use complicated words and very difficult text. Speak your heart out. 
and that itself will do. Pray for devotion, pray for knowledge, pray for light, pray for illumination. These are prayers. Don't don't go, yeah, for, oh Lord, I've got a headache. Please cure me. I've got a stomach ache. Oh, I'm I'm studying for an examination. No, that that's kind of shopkeeping religion. Don't 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 go for that kind of thing. Go for yeah, prayers for devotion. Okay. One must study Vedanta systematically step by step. Then most of these questions will dissolve, just as Swamiji has said himself. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so there is some some smart guy. Uh, so, is there a best order of practice, mantra with flowers, japa and then transition to meditation? Do it with mantra with flowers, okay? Keep on doing it. It's called a bhava pushpam, technically it's called bhava. The offering of a mantra as a flower to the deity. There, you do it all day. And then this mantra itself, this repetition along with this will lead to meditation deep meditation let it become natural don't say i'm going to do this for half an hour and then do it for half an hour nothing like that swamiji many topics in bhagavad purana found which is not found in mahabharata there does that mean bhagavad purana was written later yeah bhagavad purana was written much much later much later uh, how do we know from the language itself, the language used, the literary kind of in the Mahabharata is completely different from what you find in the Bhagavatam. Okay. So it doesn't matter. It's just uh, we're not going to fight about it. Yeah. So it is much later. These things are kind of uh, uh, they are there. But like I said, we need to Keep on asking relevant questions. Uh, okay. How to stop excuses? Oh my God. <laughs> stop excusing. <laughs> so, you weaken yourself with excuses. First thing you do in spiritual life, take the whole responsibility on your shoulder, Swami Vivekananda says. And know that you are the, are the creator of your own destiny. All the strength and succor you want is within yourself. Therefore, make your own future. Unquote. Swami Vivekananda. Okay, how to develop willpower? Yeah. Do you really want to develop willpower? You go to the gym and start lifting weights. Have a kind of a baseline. If you can lift, say, 20 pounds, start with that. And then keep on building up. Every day, increase it by one pound. And slowly, 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 you push and push and push and pull or whatever you like. And then you see you in, you're increasing that kind of weight training. So you can go up to 100 pounds, 200 pounds. Yeah, This is developing. I'm doing it to kind of... Uh, in a kind of very relaxed way. But everything you do, try to focus on whatever. Suppose you're sitting down, you're walking, you're talking, focus. Focus and focus. That focus will develop willpower. Okay. Can mantra meditation help in making mind strong? Oh, yes. Do you advise Mantra Japa for someone struggling with addiction? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I, in one of our previous classes, we had said the mantra is powerful. The mind also is powerful. And when you join both of these things together, the combination is fantastic. Only the mind has to be under, made to understand it has that latent powers. So there you are. You can, addiction, you can take care of anything in this world. You can, as it were, squeeze the whole world in your fist. That kind of power will come. And I'm not joking. It's not metaphorical. Swami Vivekananda, Swami Vivekananda himself says in one of his poems, 
कुर्मस्तारकचर्वनम त्रिभुवन उत्पात यामो भला विल विल अनहिंस द यूनिवर्स विल स्मैश द स्टार्स टू एटम्स या यू हैव दैट कैन ऑफ पावर विद इन यू सो कीप ऑन डूइंग इट एंड इट विल वर्क फॉर यू हाउ डू आई स्टे विद द मंत्र वेल वर्किंग ऑल डे वेल if you go back to our previous classes and say when you do something consciously that conscious act becomes subconscious okay obviously so when you are focused on certain day to day things you may not be repeating the mantra consciously but subconsciously the mind is repeating that so that's staying with the mantra so you so i start out saying it to myself when it fades as the day goes on i bring back to my mind during break so don't worry keep on when you are conscious keep on repeating it not loudly please uh, people will say wonder what's happened to this person <laughs> person was all right and now suddenly <laughs> so the mantra is sacred so let it be a kind of a secret so like i said later on it is harmonized with each breath of yours so when you breathe so hum hum sa i am that that i am so your mantra is, is repeated with every breath you take can women recite the gayatri mantra can we recite om before any mantra are there any rules for it in the old days the very old days the women were not allowed to repeat this gayatri mantra etc but in the new days the women can do everything <laughs> so please go on repeating om as well as the gayatri also so this you know every age sees its kind of you can say modifications the tailoring of spirituality for the age in the very old days the girls used to study along with the boys with co educational in the in those vedic schools you know in the guru's house so they used to chant the vedas together and this and later on it was in it was still in the pre christian era that the girls were told your fathers or your brothers are going to teach you you don't need to come to school okay and that started the whole kind of descent so you can please go ahead and repeat the mantra the gayatri as well as mm, can intuition develop through mantra oh yes perfect just remember in intuition is different from instinct or insight as they say this instinct or intuition what people understand as, as subconscious you can say joining of certain ideas or certain things they are subconscious but in spiritual intuition it comes from the higher mind for instance you have a circle there's a space within the circle and there's a space outside the circle the circumference also so spiritual intuition comes from outside the circle is like a comet that shoots in from outside comes within that space inner space okay while subconscious instincts or insights come from within that space in the circum circum uh, circumference sorry swami ji is mantra and hymns the same hymns are what what do you mean hymns hymns are longish hymns are forms of yes they are the same but a mantra proper mantra is condensed prayer condensed hymns so everybody likes things condensed so things are condensed so shri ram krishna says sandhya merges into gayatri gayatri merges into om so it's a kind of condensation so use the condensed form of that hymn uh what is the effect of kundalini awakening what are the symptoms oh my god 
well what happens oh that was quite fantastic don't go in for the kundalini business right now okay the kundalini can be awakened most naturally and most safely through the repetition of the mantra this is sri ram krishna's advice is advice of all the great seers so repeat the mantra and you will be able to awaken what is kundalini kundalini is nothing but a snake there is no snake there it's a symbolic representation of a coiled spiritual energy the latent spiritual energy within you there is no snake down there at the bottom of the sacral plexus okay so get that thing off out of your mind don't mistake symbology with the real things symbology is symbology so your spiritual potential is latent the mantra japa will awaken that potential uh i have got away from panic disorder with your practical approach session oh good thank you so keep on doing these kind of mantra japas okay swami ji can mantra japam cut down the effect of bad karma yes the mantra can cut all sins janma paapa nashanam the mantra when it's repeated can destroy the sins of many lifetimes do it with sincerity and you will see the results swami you were repeating om should a person visualize a deity or the symbol om well you can do either one of the two things but visualization is necessary only much later on you can hold or concentrate the mind only on the visual you can say the uh, uh, the audi audible sound of the mantra not the visual side so if it helps you do it so visualize the deity along with the symbol om while repeating om that that will be good you know the mind has a faculty for visualization so don't suppress that faculty okay it has also the faculty of to conceptualize words use that faculty so yeah yeah are both the sthula and sukshma sharira affected by chanting of the mantra yes both the gross and the subtle bodies are affected by the chanting of the mantra would it be appropriate to say that it is the prana which is actually influenced so even the prana the life force is also affected by the mantra the mantra becomes one with the gross body one with the vital force and one with your mind so it not only become one it transforms all of them okay yes so we have this whole thing influence it influences the the subtle body and also the causal body the mantra is supreme we stop here for today om shanti 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 hari om tat sat Shri Ram Krishna Arpanamastu